with fresh Aquenda before also important WBA championship fight uh, in Germany versus Manuel Char. How do you feel about fighting in Germany? Oh, it's a great atmosphere. I've been going to Germany for many, many years, sparring with a lot of great, great fighters over there, and uh, it's been always great receptive over there towards me. What do you think about your opponent, Manuel Char? Oh, he's a heavyweight. He's got a good punch. He's a heavyweight, so heavy, heavy, heavyweight dangerous. Um, you know, he's been around for a little bit. You know, he's fought some good fighters, and uh, you know, it's gonna be you know a good hard fight. Did you follow his career, or you started to follow him, watch his fight when it was known you're gonna fight him? Yeah, pretty much. That's when I started seeing him when, he, when I know I was gonna fight him. I'm ready to follow his career, but I've heard you know researching that uh, he's fought. Some Pretty big names, and uh, you know, I look forward to the challenge. You have some great fights in your career. Um, which one you will you will rank as the most important of your career, and maybe if not the most important, the best fight of your career? Hopefully on the 29th, but we never know. Man. Before, which one was the best fight? Of well, one of my greatest victories was this highly touted prospect, the name the Black Rhino Clifford, the Black Rhino Etienne. That was my Showtime debut. That was back in 2001 or two around there. But yeah, it was a it was a great fight. Fight that a lot of people had me as an underdog, 11 to one. You know, to lose. You know, he just beat a lot of highly touted prospects. So that fight right there will put me to that. Uh, great atmosphere in the heavyweight division. You fought in many different places, but never in Germany. What do you know and what you think about German boxing? Uh, Germany's got a great, great school of boxing. Uh, they develop a lot, a lot of world champions, all and you know, ethnicity, you know, country, you know, from you know, Iran, from from even their own people in Germany and outside of Germany, South Africans and others, you know ethnic uh, countries, which not just Germans, but worldwide, a lot of fighters that came from Germany. So Germany is a beautiful, beautiful fight town. And they love boxing. I look forward to the welcoming my championship fight there. You had a, you had a long layoff due to different problems. problems. Nothing went easy in your career. Just You have to persevere, go through it, and just uh, hope for the chance to be a world champion. How do you feel right now, and how is training going right now? Well, you know, that's the politics of boxing. It's unfortunate that stuff like that happened to boxers, you know, like myself. Uh, you know, I'm a poster child of just keeping positive, you know, just telling, you know, people, the youth, uh, you know, the, the up and coming fighters, you know, it's never too late. You know, you, you always got to stay positive, you know, through all these circumstances, what I've been going through that have held me away from boxing for almost four years. It's just the politics, unfortunate, of boxing, but again, you know, I'm a very strong-minded heavyweight. I fought everybody in the heavyweight division. I'm still here out of my own era. So that should show you that, hey, I'm very persevere to make things happen the positive way. And look, March, no, September 29th, you will see the great Fred Kendall finally winning that heavyweight championship. You mentioned about how tough the fighters has to be, have to be not only in the ring, but in many, many occasions outside of the ring. All this politics of boxing, fights happen, fight being canceled. Did you ever cross this mind, it's not worth my time? It's interesting you said a lot of people, you know, that pretty much like Fred, I don't know how you do it. You know, a lot of people would have been retired, a lot of people would have forget boxing. How, how do you do it? Again, my mind, you know, I've been to the gut. I was born in the roughest project in, in Puerto Rico, to the roughest project in Chicago. I've seen it all, you know, I've, I've lived in the gutter. And here I am today, after all these sacrifices as a youth, and coming up, and now that I'm helping others you know, persevere in my country that was devastated, devastated last August, and here I am with my career, you know, on the brink, on the you know, cusp of finally finding someone that's hopefully clean, that's hopefully, you know, passes all these tests and do the right thing, and 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 have an even playing field, but so to speak. I'm just blessed, you know, have a man, God, you know, faith, staying positive and just perseverance, you know, that's important in my life. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put you age on the spot, but you've been that's in the okay. ring for more than 20 years. <laughs> and I have a like tricky question for you. What do you stand now compared to the younger version of Fresa Quentin? Oh, believe it or not, I still feel the same. I haven't put 
you know, been in a lot of wars, put my body through, you know, hell and back, you know, did drugs or drink alcohol. So, again, I'm very preserved because I do not put a lot of waste in my body. It's like a car. You got a, a Mercedes. You put good uh, junk gas, so it run like crap. You put prime, you know, premium, so it run like a champ. And that's the difference why I'm still here. All these other headways, you know, they disappear. And I'm the long man standing. So the, my, your mind is fueling, fueling your body. You can say that. That's correct. Remember, boxing is 90% mental, 10% physical. And my mental stage, nobody could break that. The man who charge could tell everyone, oh, I'm gonna knock him out one round, oh, he's an old man, he can do it. He can say everything, just like Shannon Briggs. He came up to me, started huffing, but all this, you know, let's go champ and all this. But then the day I looked at him in his eyes, and I just knew he has no soul. I'm gonna go right through him. And that's how it's gonna be, whoever says the same. My last question. How is gonna be? What's your prediction for September 29th? Oh, it's gonna be a spectacular victory. You know, if it's a decision, you know, again, you might have tried a very strong fighter, but it's a knockout, that's a beautiful plus, you know, it's in God's hands. But one thing I do know, I'm training very hard. I'm gonna be, be, not only 100% ready, but I'm gonna be there to win. You know, this is the real deal. This is the most prestigious title in sports, and I'll never underestimate any, any heavyweight. So I'm coming in there like the first of Kendall, of all the new, the present, I'm the same. Nothing's changed. I said the last question I was lying. This is gonna be the last question. Do you own private ranking of the best heavyweight of all time? Top three. My personal top yeah. three heavyweight? Of course, Muhammad, my mentor, Muhammad Ali. Uh, Joe Lewis, you know, uh, one of the greatest fighters that I looked up in the history of books. And, um, the third, you know, I have to say... So many greats. I mean, yeah, so many greats, man. But, you know, I got to give it to, you know, Holyfield, man. Even though I fought the man, Evander Holyfield. I mean, the man was a light heavyweight Olympian, a cruiserweight champion, and they did what he did in the heavyweights to fight all the behemoth, the Mike Tysons, the Lennox Lewis, and overcome, like, what I'm going to do on September 29th. I, I, I got to put them there. So those are my three. Those are my personal three. And like I said, I'm a historian of the sport. I study <laughs> boxing, I mean, to T. And that's that's my passion. That's why I'm still here. Thank you very much, Professor Quinn. I appreciate buddy. it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. <laughs> no time. What's it? Huh? You've been a historian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs>